we're speaking to all of the self-employed buyers out there because there's often some different processes that people need to go through. Can you just explain how it works if you're sure. self-employed? So generally we look at your tax returns to your average of your tax returns, your net income, not your gross. So be careful what you do with the accountant reducing mm -hmm. your taxes because if your income is too low, you won't qualify. And the second part you're probably wondering is what if that's too low? We got stated income programs. So lenders will take a look at your net income, your gross. Let's say your netting's 80, you're grossing 200. Mm -hmm. They might say, okay, we'll use an income somewhere in between. Maybe they'll use 120 for your income. That's right. called stated income. That's a different program. And they'll look at your expenses and add them back. There's also B lenders out there. Now B lenders will look at your income and okay. they'll look at your bank statements. So sometimes they'll take a look at your bank statements and look at six months of bank statements and say, okay, you got this income going through your bank account. We'll use that income. And the rate's going to be higher, about a percent higher. Now you might say, I don't want to pay a percent higher. You're paying 5% with a bank. You might be paying 6% with these guys. So you borrow 500 grand. What's that per year? Five grand in interest. So over five years, you're paying 25 grand in interest, right? Extra right. to go with that B lender. But if you had to declare more income on your yeah. taxes, you could be spending 20, 30,000 dollars a year in taxes more right extra every year to try and get that a rate mortgage if you're self-employed and you're thinking about buying a property it never hurts to be you know two years in advance to start oh, to prepare for it 100 yeah